Hello and welcome back to Jay's studio. Um, here's gonna, this is going to be part two of the hot end upgrade video. As you can see, it's actually printing in front of you um, and uh, doing an okay job. Um, there's definitely some tuning to be done, uh, and uh, there's a few prints that I've. This is probably the fourth or fifth like print to include the calibration prints I've done thus far. But it's actually printing well, uh, extruding well. Um, at, at, and uh, so, so at the end of the day, this is going to be, I think, a success story. Uh, again, apologize for a bit of the wire mess. I've kind of tied it up with zip ties, but I'm waiting some, for some good uh, wire looming uh, to make it a nice, uh, nice looking solution uh, for uh, routing the wires. But anyway, let me get this set up over here again. I do want to show you um, some things that I had to do to make this work. If you remember from part one, I was showing you the block and some of the, uh, some of the pieces uh, from Array's STL uh, solution for using the stock uh, hot end mount here from Everyone, but to put a Micro Swiss J head type um, uh, actual hot end inside it uh, required uh, a couple of pieces. Most notably was this block, um, which if you remember uh, when we were looking at, uh, basically has the, the hot end coming up through the bottom, uh, the, the the cooling fins, if you will, or the heat sink is what it is, uh, going up into the block, um, and then uh, this this larger size facing the facing the cooling fan over here, and then there's some some wire cabling routing uh, channels cut into this block. Uh, this wound up getting slid into here, mounted with the provided holes in the STL to include mounting the hot end with the holes here. All of that stuff we covered in, in part one. But what I really need to cover in this particular video as we're watching it kind of print and work um, are the, the modifications I had to do to this block. For that matter, the modifications I had to do to the screw that's on the top, uh, or you know, the screw assembly that's here to get everything to work together. So, um, and if uh, and I will be providing this on the Area One Facebook page as well, uh, and and I'll contact Ray directly because I think his solution is great uh, to be able to use the standard carriage here for something new, a better hot end. But there's a lot of work that needs to be done to this particular uh, design. Uh, for it to be really a drop-in replacement. So I'm going to kind of start at the top and work from there. So the first, and I noticed this, or, or I, no, I noted this in the original video, I think a couple of times, but this block, this entire block needs to be resized uh, from on one dimension only, and that's the top. The top needs a full three millimeters taken off of it. Um, now that, you know, that, that, that three millimeters might, you know, you know, Bottom line is you need three millimeters off. I mean, I made mine work. How did I make it work? By sanding off a good millimeter and a half. Took a lot of time and trying to keep it nice and flat. Um, and even then, uh, with a millimeter and a half, I'm really close on my Z offset and the probe height, right, to be able to home and probe my bed without the nozzle actually hitting the bed. I think my offset is like 0.59 uh, millimeters. Um, so it's very close to being coincident with the, the where the probe's sensor point is. So you really need about three three millimeters off the top of this for this to work with, an, with a wider range of hot ends available on AliExpress in the in the what's called J-head style of hot end. Um, and if you took three millimeters off of that, this would make everything work really nicely, uh, at least for, for the sizing here. Now, what else needed to be done? Um, where this side of it, the smaller hole, aligns with where the ABL sensor here, the automatic bed leveling sensor, this, uh, the, the screws, um, this is not sized correctly at all. And on this side, where I'm pointing here with my right index finger, there needs to be that entire wall there needs just to be a channel because where this I'm pointing at over here, where this particular uh, screw goes into the assembly, um, it, it it goes right the way the way it works out is it it goes right into the actual wall that's here on the uh, the block that you print. So it doesn't work. So that. That channel needs to be cut through. Um, I had to do some drilling and, and slicing and whatever to get that to work. Uh, I made it work. Doesn't look pretty in there, but who, you know, at this point, who cared? I just needed to get it to work. Secondly, um, you're going to need to, um, and again, working around it, 
uh, this channel guide here, and this is where, like for example, your hot end and your thermistor wires go, as well as the part hot end cooling fan, because it goes back towards the back side of your, your carriage over here. Um, I wound up having to, one, cut uh, this corner and round it. So this corner needed to be rounded to get rid of the pointy piece to be able to fit things back into this channel. And I needed to take off a good two to three millimeters of the bottom of this like guide uh, for everything to work too. So um, again, it, that, that's not a lot, but I did take some manipulation at that point to get things uh, to actually work. Um, and you know, there you have it, it's, it's what it is. Now, the other big ish thing that I had to do with this block to get um, everything to work, it, it to fit in here and then actually attach onto the x-axis carriage was, um, again, this is the backside, right? Um, you know, and it, it slides in like this. The bottom screw, so hopefully you're following me, there's there's like, there's the two screws that you use to put the carriage on, or excuse me, the hot end on the carriage. But these wheels, right, your, your, your pulley wheels, um, they have a bit of their screws, I'm pointing at it right now, protruding from the carriage. These two at the top are no issue. But your pulley wheel on the bottom protrudes right into this wall. Okay, so I wound up having to drill out a huge portion. Uh, it's very, you know, a big portion of this wall here so that when you get this in, um, in, in and mounted and everything all set up, when you go to mount it on your carriage so that it actually fits square against that carriage plate, you're gonna have to drill out the bottom of this particular plane. This is the, the back plane where the cable management is, etc. So right about in there where I'm pointing with my finger, you're gonna have to drill a good three to four uh, millimeters and a pretty wide hole to give you lots of clearance uh, so that you can avoid the protruding screw from the pulley wheel. Um, those were the major changes I had to do with this. All of that required additional sanding, of course, to get things to uh, so, that they, so that they're not going to cut wires um, and things like that. So while this is a great solution, and this is not meant to, 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 to disparage Ray's solution at all, but it is meant to say that there's some decent amount of work that you're going to have to do on this block. In part one, I showed you the work that you're going to have to do on the carriage itself. Um, that uh, The hot end enclosure here itself, remember you're going to have to completely widen and deepen out the uh, slot uh, on the bottom and ensure that everything sits nice and square. Um, lastly, but not least, um, I wound up with this, what I'm pointing at here, the, uh, the, 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 the screw, as it were, that screws down into your uh, hot end heat sink and also has a little washer uh, to hold your PTFE tubing down in there nice and tight. This uh, required shortening uh, it required shortening and it required sanding right where my fingernail is showing sanding to be able to get down deep enough into the hot end. Um, anyway, bottom line is that you, you had to like do some do some sanding and whatever to get the diameter such that it actually fits down in there and actually pushes up against the washer holding your PTFE, uh, the PTFE that's in the hot end uh, nice and tight. That's, you know, the same thing as what we try to do with the hot end fix on the standard Airy One hot ends. Anyway, that was my journey with this thing. All the hardware worked just fine. Like, you know, all the screws and stuff that you'll get for this worked just fine. Uh, what's on the, uh, the provided STL link that, of Ray's STL when he, when he talks about the screws and the hardware that you're going to need, that's all correct. It's going to work just great to, to mount uh, the hot end in this block and then put it all uh, together inside uh, the, the, uh, the hot end carriage here or enclosure. Uh, that all worked just fine. Um, as you can see, the uh, wire ring worked just fine. I, I wound up having to do some more splicing uh, because the hot end, the heater cartridge that I had uh, that came with this was supposed to be 24 volts and it was not. Uh, it was 12, so I was having an error, a uh, thermal runaway error when I first first uh, started it up and when troubleshot it to that and then wound up having to, you can see, sorry here, splice in. Uh, a, a 24 volt end, the, the stock uh, heater bar onto that particular cable. Um, other than that, it's got a new thermistor in it. Uh, and like I said, I'm getting new wire looming soon to where I'll be able to take this wire and put it inside a nice loom and then tie it up nicely so that it actually looks professional instead of uh, kind of hacked as it does right now. Uh, other than that, uh, things seem to be working just fine. Uh, the, like I said, my, I'll try to get a good view there, so that's a better view. 
Um, I'll try to, or I think my Z offset is only right around 0.6 millimeters, 0.59, something like that. Um, and so it's, it's, you know, I, I, I had to do that sanding on the top of the block or else this would have never worked. Um, and I wanted to maintain the stock sensor mounting block. Um, and like I say, that can all be mitigated with losing three millimeters off the top of this block. Um, and, and everything would be uh, much better in that regard. So, uh, yeah, strongly recommended though, because this hot end is the, the hot end of the way Ray designed the hot end fix that goes with the, with the, the mounting system uh, is much better than trying to print just a washer and trying to make things work in the standard Area 1 hot end. Um, I'm looking forward to using this for a while and having it break in. Uh, so far, so good. This particular piece looks really nice, but it doesn't have supports. Let me show you some of the, uh, to close this out, I'll show you some of the stuff that I printed right off the beginning. Without doing any calibration at all, I printed this Benchy. Um, and the Benchy actually came out really nicely. Uh, there are a couple things that aren't perfect with it. Um, there was some kind of a shift on a layer. Let me see if I can get you to see it uh, right about where my fingernail is. There was one shift there. That's probably a uh, Z-axis issue or it probably got bumped. I don't know what, what happened. Other than that, it was perfect though. So I didn't, as far as Z-axis stuff, um, really nice, uh, really nice, um, there you go, definition on the bottom layer. Uh, super clear lettering there for CT3D XYZ. Um, no retraction stringing. Uh, so, I mean, I just, you know, I just used a winged, uh, you know, I hadn't calibrated this hot end. So I just used like, I don't know, two and a half, maybe two millimeters of retraction, 30 millimeters per second, and got no strings whatsoever. I mean, it's just really nicely done as far as the stringing. Check out the detail on the, on the top of this. I uh, printed beautifully um, for quite a bit of this. So I, this was no calibration at all. So I was pretty impressed uh, with the Benchy. Um, then I did some, I did a flow cube, sorry. Um, and the flow cube came out pretty nicely. Uh, dimensions were really kind of spot on. So I was happy with the dimensions of the cube. Top looked good. Bottom um, looks good, but if I run over my fingernail, I decided I needed 1% more bottom flow. Um, but other than that, uh, and on the, the walls, I actually lowered it uh, a percent. If you can see, there's some zits there, just a few. Um, and I was like, I can lower the wall flow just a little bit. Um, but really, um, overall, I was super happy with uh, the flow cube. Um, and then I printed a few towers. Uh, towers were uh, uh, retraction towers and temperature towers. I didn't save those. Uh, but basically, I got my retraction to 1.75 uh, millimeters at 30 millimeters per second. Um, I'm really happy with that, especially for a long Bowden system. Uh, that's that's pretty nice, and I'm still using a linear advance of 0.35 uh, on this printer. Uh, this print is about to be done, so it's kind of nice to see it kind of finish up here. Um, sorry for the lighting, because my lighting's on the top, but let me see if I can actually get better lighting here if I do this. I think that'll give you actually better uh, clarity of the print itself. There you go. Um, I did print a few other things. Um, Printed some, printed some wings for another model um, that came out okay. Uh, didn't come out great though because uh, I, what I, I still need to really calibrate in. I mean, the detail is great on this, but what was, uh, what was difficult was the, were the supports. Um, it's not printing tree supports at just one wall uh, thickness all that well right now. So there you have it. Well, I've droned on a bit. Um, and this is a longer video, um, so I will let you go at this point as this finishes out. Hopefully that helps anyone that needs or, or is looking to upgrade their hot end on the ER20 and use the very same hot end carriage that uh, comes stock on the printer instead of having to like completely change up the look of your printer. So, uh, and if you have any questions, drop them down, down below. I'll do my best uh, to answer. Uh, happy 3D printing and see you next time.